pirates. Clive sits on the mat, leafing through his favourite book, the one he hides behind the atlas in the book corner. He finds his favourite picture of the happy old lady pirate. He stares at the picture. His classmates giggle, twitch, squeak, whispering a mean word Clive tries to ignore, while the teacher stands at the front of the room talking. The old lady pirate's cutlass hangs off a belt looped around her fat middle. Her fatness is light and bouncy, as if she were made from blown up balloons. She pegs big orange trousers onto a washing line strung between tall crooked buildings. She doesn't have to sit on a mat in a stupid classroom. Clive bends closer to the book on his lap, gazing at the old lady pirate, who looks so thrilled to be alive she might burst apart, white hair whooshing off, her cutlass spinning down to the ground for Clive to pick up. The floor trembles. Clive looks out the window as another class troops past, two by two, yapping and shush-shushing on their way to fitness. It reminds him of playtimes and lunch times, everyone clustering together, swinging off the climbing frame or dashing from tree to tree, shouting tig tug tig, while he sits alone. Even the sparrows around the rubbish bin cluster together, but he sits alone. He doesn't know why or why it hurts so much in a spot halfway down his front, between his neck and his belly button. Eyes this way the teacher says. Lucy reaches across, pinching Clive's arm hard. He blinks fast, tracing a finger around the old lady pirate, pegging orange trousers to the washing line. The tall crooked buildings are wrapped in mist, the way his father wraps suitcases in cling film until they become gigantic glassy chrysalises. Clive wonders what he'd find at the bottom of the tall buildings. Narrow footpaths, bony trees poking up out of holes in the concrete, branches filled with nests made from spider webs. Cheeping birds swoop low to the ground chasing lolly wrappers, like the sparrows at lunchtime fighting over chip bags. He sees a gingery cat creep toward the birds, ears flat, eyes gleaming. Clive, shut that book and pay attention. Lucy slyly turns to him, mouthing, Tard. One day, thinks Clive, he'll stab out her eyes with a cutlass.